interesting evolution of the company because they've done so many, you know, hardcore shooters, and now this is like the game's rated E ten plus. It's mm-hmm. like you know, I think it appeals to a wider demographic of folks. It's just you know, it's a game that can push the industry in kind of a new direction. Sure, it's had a very um, smart ad campaign as well. The yeah. TV TV There's ads in word particular, uh, yeah. you know, no, I mean, <laughs> yeah. but it is you know their, their ad campaign. Uh, you know, people have been probably seeing it all over the shop. It's you know, it's kind of cute. It reminds you of Wally to start off with, so it sucks those people in, and then it's like you know it's time to play with science and that yeah. and that is going to uh, you know inspire parents to go and shell out 60 bucks because yeah. mm-hmm. wow this isn't a shooter where people get killed it's all about physics and it's about you know uh, problem solving it's smart my big complaint with it is that there really is no replay value so even after you finish the game you don't get a lot of the bonuses you got yeah. at the end of the first portal with like the yeah. time trials and all that also, cooperatively, there are no leaderboards, so it's not like you can yeah. see how quickly a, another tandem finish something and try yeah. to beat their time. So I feel like maybe the end game could have been a little better supported, but yeah. what you get that's on the disc for the time that it lasts, I think, is is awesome. It's, yeah, I'm sure it's worth do. sixty bucks. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's you know, it'll be I'm sure a, a game of the year uh, contender. I mean, you know, it'll a lot certainly of be stuff. in the discussion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there'll be a lot of stuff coming out, obviously, towards the end of the year, but you know. Yeah, for the first half of the year, it certainly is uh, you know the biggest release, and you know I think people were expecting it to be good, and I think it fully delivers. So your best game of the year so far? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm borderline. I still Where's enjoy it? Dead Space a lot. Yeah, no, Dead, Dead Space is up there. I mean, there haven't you know the interesting thing is like last year I remember I was having these discussions with our VGA producers, and it was like you know by June there were legitimately probably like four or five game of the year contenders that had come out. Mm-hmm. This year it's like. There hasn't been anything near that. I mean, last yeah. year you had Mass Effect out by now. You had God of War. You had Red Dead about to come out. Super yep. Mario Galaxy was about to come out. Um, you know, a lot of big games have come out. And this year it's like, yeah, it's Portal, Dead Space. I don't know what else is. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's nothing a, is jumping. There's a mind. handful of other games that fall just a cut below those. But yeah, you're Killzone right, this year compared good, to like, last yeah. year. Not it's not right. So that's why I say Portal's great. But I, yeah, it's you know, yes, it's the best game of the year so far. But it's not like there's been you know six amazing 90 plus rated games and we'll, we'll see i mean i think you know the summer will be dry i mean ellie noir is coming out we'll see how that does uh but the fall is just going to be insane watch out for infamous that's what i say yeah i can't wait can't wait to play infamous to the time after oblivion opened when the sons of skyrim would spill their own blood but no one wanted to believe believe they even exist all right, next we're going to talk about a game that, quite honestly, I think may be one of the most popular on GameTrailers.com right now. Of all the VGA exclusives, it was probably the one that shocked me the most with its interest from our users. Um, and that game is Skyrim. Brooks, you checked it out. Jeff, you also had a chance to check out the game. Is all the hype justified? Yes. Yeah? No, no, it is. Uh, <laughs> Good short ass short yeah. segment. Let's go. Let's, let's wrap. No, it was great. Uh, I hadn't shown a lot of interest in this game. Now, did you uh, like the prior the games? Yeah. Uh, no, I did not. I didn't jump into them. I didn't get totally invested in them. But there's something about Skyrim during that presentation that just made me You say, love wow. the dragons. That's what you like. It's the dragons, <laughs> yeah. They, they finally introduced dragons. It seems, you know, more accessible than the previous, uh, you know, Elder Scrolls games. And I think, uh, you know, one thing that is really interesting about it is that, you know, the Elder Scrolls games, the graphics have always, you know, not particularly great. Yeah. Um, and this one is the first one where I really feel like the graphics aren't going to hold it back. Um, and, you know, even, like, Fallout and stuff like that. I mean, they're good games. You know, you look at Mass Effect, the bar, that's set graphically now mm-hmm. for, you know, sort of Western RPGs like that. Um, and this one feels accessible. Um, it looks really great. And, I mean, there's – I think there's going to be a lot of cool stuff to it. And, yeah, we went through the demo. Todd Howard uh, took us through it for about an hour yeah. and showed different elements of it. And I, I think it looks good. I mean, I still have some questions around, like, the – the dialogue system and what they're doing there, I think, you know, still uh, I prefer sort of the way Mass Effect does that and some other RPGs. But, you know, in terms of, of combat and the action, um, it, it just looks really accessible. So I think it'll probably be the, the most successful one. And, yeah, I, I agree with you, Shane. I was, you know, it's amazing to see the amount of interest in that in that game. Yeah. So I have a question for you. Um, I really didn't like Oblivion. I know a lot of people loved it. I tried playing it on the PC and Why the 360. Not? It just yeah, left me. Problem? It just left me cold. I mean, just that trying get to get in it initially, right. and you're stuck in the dungeon. You're trying to work your way out. What's the thing just, is like the accessibility wasn't yeah. there. Like I think that's you know that's what I like about this. Yeah, it was like slightly it's, intimidating. The first one was. Yeah. It was Do too you think big it's for a, as good. accessible as say Fallout 3 was? Because I, I mean, Fallout 3 is yeah. my favorite game. No, all I time. think so. Yeah, I, that's the thing with you know. You're right. Like the other ones, it always felt like you know it's just, you're starting in this Dungeons and Dragons mode, and it was just you know really laborious to sort of you know get the game going. Mm -hmm. And this one, I mean, we didn't necessarily see the beginning of the game, but what I saw was, like, you know, they're dragons. Like Todd said, you know, you're not going to spend 
15 hours playing the game and then see a dragon. It's no. like dragons are there right at the beginning. They're part of the lore. Um, I think, you know, they're, they're, there's, I think a lot of the RPG makers are getting smarter about sort of, you know, making these games very accessible um, to a wider audience from the get-go. So, yeah, I think it's, um, it looks, you know, it looks beautiful. And it's just, you even walk around the world. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it appeals to you. And you see the dragons, and I'm sure, you know, they haven't talked about it, but I'm sure... At some point, you're going to be able to, you know, you know, mount the dragons and you know, fly them around and stuff like that. So now yeah, um, they built a new graphics engine. You're mentioning how much better the graphics look. Yeah, it's um, the details are they're not using Game Gear right anymore, right? Yeah, I think they took Game Gear out the back yeah, and Ga- shot exactly. it. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's it's not Game Gear anymore. I think it's it's all in house though. They're not using you know Unreal or Crytek or anything like that. That they've sort of rebuilt it. Um, the tech side and there's also this thing called Radiant Story. Which used to have radiant AI, and mm-hmm. Todd's talking about this idea of radiant story, which will you know create more permutations in the storytelling as well. But yeah, I think the the graphics look really good. I mean, that's uh, the debut gameplay trailer that they put out online a couple months ago. I think shocked everyone about oh, yeah. you know, how beautiful it looked. Um, and, and Todd yeah. was saying how how excited the team was to finally start using colors that aren't gray and <laughs> brown. From, yeah, yeah, from Fallout, he's like, oh, we can use green again. Awesome. Yeah, does it take you ten hours to get to wherever Skyrim is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean the you know the snow and the weather effects look really cool. Uh, so you know it, it's very very early going in that game. I mean, it was an hour demo, but I still feel like we've only seen a sliver of it, and I'm sure we'll see yeah. more at E3. But uh, yeah, it's it's going to be you know, it's going to be great, and it needs to be great to come out in November and uh, compete with everything else. Eleven, eleven, eleven. Yeah, yeah. they um and getting back to the dragons, the dragons actually speak to you, which yeah. I thought was pretty cool. Do I that, like that? A talking dragon? Do I not? <laughs> no, <it's> <laughs> actually, <laughs> just, just to add to that, that's actually one of the coolest things that I read about the game, where there's this whole dragon language that mm-hmm. the the player learns. And for those that don't know out there, um, you learn like single words like fuss, ro, da. Yeah. And you kind they're of called dragon shells. The yeah, they're so abilities yeah. that you earn. And, and as you, you, build, you build your vocabulary, right? And over time, you get to string them together, kind of like a song in Ocarina of Time, and it does a spell, right? Yes, yep. exactly. And then there's different levels of those spells themselves. Uh, besides that, have they revealed any other cool gameplay kind of mechanics like that? Uh, we did see a lot of combat. I. Yeah, how does the it, combat work? The combat's still a little iffy with the camera, and especially when you're using a sword and shield. But um, the magic spells, I was really impressed with those. Yeah, the magic. I mean, it looks really good. Again, it's like visually. You could combine the magic spells yep. and, and and have like fire in one hand, ice in the other, if you want, and then. Just it's got go sort of a little that, bit of yeah, yeah. Bioshock sort and of then feel you to put them it. Together yeah. and boil a kettle. <laughs> <laughs> now this sounds really ambitious, but that also makes me a little nervous. Obviously, their track record in the past hasn't been the best with you know putting out games that are essentially finished. Lots of bugs in their games. Switching up the formula so much, does that make you guys nervous at all that maybe they may encounter even more issues like that? Yeah, you know, th- what's interesting is, like, you know, I dealt with them a lot last uh, fall when they were talking about announcing it at VGAs, and they, they were very adamant from the get-go that, like, you know, they wanted to announce a date, they wanted to stick to it, and I talked to Todd a lot uh, last week at their event in Park City, and, I mean, they feel very confident that they're going to make the date in Well, we uh, know they'll November. make the date. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, Todd, I mean, I don't think, you know, him and his team, they're not kind of guys that are going to cut corners, I think. I mean, the legacy of those games. <laughs> I, well, I also think, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, little, I think The that, legacy of those games <laughs> says that they do cut corners, though. Well, I, mm. well, I when you're that ambitious know. and the world's that big and there's so much going on, it's bound yeah, to happen. Yeah, it's like any, anything that big. Yeah. And the Gamebryo engine wasn't exactly, you know, that was creaking and during Fallout 3 and then was collapsing by the time New Vegas came around. So I think a lot of the problems they had were with the Gamebryo engine. I mean, it, it, you say that you can't blame them. Who do you blame? You have to blame the developer. I mean, I mean to Elder Scrolls' credit, I, it's hard to think of any other game around that time that kind of did the same thing. So, I mean... It, it was what about New no Vegas? Doubt. I mean, what's the excuse for New Vegas? Obsidian, Obsidian <laughs> Entertainment. <laughs> yeah, but it's still got their name on it. Well, that's just yeah. That was a, I mean, that was a, a weird one, right? To you know have Fallout not being done by Bethesda Game Studios. Um, and yeah, I think you know this is return to form for Todd and his team. They've been working on this you know since Fallout Three, and you know Fallout Three is a great game. I I think there's a lot there, and you're right. I'm sure they will have things that they have to cut and features, you know, that that won't make it. Although I think they're being pretty careful about what they're promising with this one. The same thing will laugh at DLC. Yeah. Here, here's the <laughs> million, here's the million dollar question though: Will there be horse armor? Oh, they talked about we'll that, didn't they? Yeah. Well, I mean, there, people a lot of people <laughs> asked about, you know, will, will there be horseback riding and this and that. And I think Todd, when I interviewed him for GTTV, um, I think he said like there he wouldn't confirm it, but he definitely sort of suggested that it'll be uh, it'll be there yeah. if it works correctly. So. And getting back to the 